Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I am creating some beautiful everyday farmhouse decor that you are going to love. These projects are very easy to recreate and I am so excited to show them to you. This is also a collaboration with one of my very good YouTube friends. I am so excited to introduce you to her, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoy crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that like button. But let's get started. I have this bucket from Dollar Tree and I think it's darling the way that it is. But when I got home, I realized that the handle was kind of coming off. So I just decided to take them both off because I didn't really know how to fix that really. So I kind of have an idea that I'm going to do for the handles. But first I'm going to take these little stickers that are just like these little raised bead stickers. Um, and I'm going to run them around the top and the bottom. They're super easy to work with and you just kind of get your spacing there. They stick very, very well. So so you kind of want to make sure when you stick them down that you know where you're sticking them because they're a little difficult to kind of pull up once they're down but you can see how easy they are and if you have to um, once you get to the other end and you need to take some off you can just kind of pull them and they just rip apart so fun and what I'm going to do is we're going to paint over these and so it will it will look good I promise now I think these buckets are so cute that the way that they are but you know I'm here to kind of give you some inspiration to show you some different ways to decorate things so I don't want you saying like oh the bucket was beautiful before because I know it was but this is kind of fun to make it match your decor a little bit more and make it more for you now I'm just using my crocodile tool and I will link that in my description box down below to make those holes just a little bit bigger because I'm going to use some rope to go through those after I get this all painted so I just go through and I paint this I actually did one coat of chalk paint here and then I actually went out into my garage and spray painted it because those beads are a little difficult to get the chalk paint to stick to now to give it a little detail so you can see that little raised area I just take some elephant chalk paint but you could use like mineral or you could even use antiquing wax and just lightly go over those beads and that's just going to make them pop they kind of blend in if you leave them all white and don't do this step here. It would be fine if you did, but this is the way you definitely notice them. And I like everything weathered and distressed. With what's left in my brush, I kind of just go over the middle portion of this cute little bucket here. I go up and down like the seam and everything, just give it kind of a little bit of an aged look like it's had a plant in it and it's gotten a little bit dirty. <laughs> and then I'm just going to tape off the end of my rope. This rope came from Dollar Tree and I am just going to feed it through and tie it and then I'll feed the other, so you'll kind of see how I'm doing it here and then just tie it off on both sides. Just tying that very tight and then I pull it against the pail there the bucket to make sure that it is tight and then I will cut off the end and you can see here that I've got that other side I just decide my length I cut it off and tie it and I'll just do this on both sides to give it a something cute something a little bit different for the handle especially since I had the the broken handle on it so this part would be completely optional but I do like how it looks it gives it a very farmhouse vibe this plant is from Ikea they fit perfectly in there if you want them to sit up just a little bit you put just a couple tumbling tower blocks in the base of it but I think this turned out so cute and it's perfect for every day you could even embellish the front part of this if you wanted to I kind of like this simplicity of it leaving it like this. I am so excited to introduce you to my great friend, Mary Beth from MB Gray Designs. Mary Beth is amazing and she is also another farmhouse lover and she does so many fun different DIYs and has a lot of fun different styles that she does. Here's just kind of a peek at some of the projects that she has created. She usually tries to join my five under five challenge that I do every month and she always does a spectacular job. I know you guys are going to love her. She is also doing some farmhouse DIYs for you for everyday decorating so down in my description box there's going to be a link to her video and her channel so make sure you stop by and say hi to her subscribe to her if you're not already i know you guys are going to love her because she is absolutely fantastic and she is so talented and i'm so excited that she wanted to do a collaboration together so i could go ahead and showcase all of her work to you guys Again, just look for that link down in my description box and also pinned it in my comments and it will take you right over to her video. So thank you so much, Mary Beth, for collabing with me today. I have this little oval sign left over from Christmas time and I just used some spackling to cover in that little hole at the top, sand it down, and I'm just going to cover this completely in some white chalk paint. You can totally pick your own colors that match your own decor to do this. With this sign, I don't need this little end part here. It's a little bit taller than what I need. So I'm just using my saw to cut that off. 
to me, this oval shape looked kind of like an egg. So I thought it would be fun to make like a little farm fresh egg sign out of it. So I'm just going to use my cutting machine to cut out where it says farm fresh eggs here. And I got this from Cricut Design Space, but you could definitely freehand something. You can use the water slide decal paper, uh, print on tissue paper. There are so many different options that you can do and use to get whatever type of lettering you want on your sign. And then I'm just showing you, I have this cute little rooster that is a Christmas ornament left over. It's from Hobby Lobby. Guys, if you're ever looking for something for tiered trays or to have for some little different embellishments here and there, when the Christmas ornaments come out at Hobby Lobby, think of that as you're looking through them. I am just going to cover the back of the sign up, so I'm just cutting some craft paper down to size. I'll take some hot glue and run it all around the perimeter of the sign, and then I will just take my brayer. I do have a link for that down in my description box, and I just roll that hot glue while it's still warm, and it just kind of spreads it out a little bit, and it's going to make that paper stick. Then I just cut it as close as I can, and then I will take my little sander, and I will just, in a slow downward motion, sand around all of the edges, and that backing will look like it was meant to go on the sign, and made for it. So now I just take my cute little chicken and I just put hot glue all over the back side. I'm just going to turn it over and glue it to the top portion of the sign. I decided to kind of have it peeking up over the top there. That is completely personal preference there. And then I just use some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree to put on either side and sandwich and make a, a little stand for it. And now I just take one of these little egg cartons. I can't remember if I got this one at Dollar Tree or Walmart. You get them either place and, and they come with a bunch of little fake eggs inside of it. And I'm just gluing that to the back of the sign. And then I'm just gluing a couple little tumbling tower blocks onto the bottom of it so it can stand upright. Just put my cute little eggs in there. And now I'm just going to kind of do some embellishing. I like to go over my vinyl with a little bit of white paint in my brush to kind of make it look not so shiny. And then I always go around the edge of my items with, not always, but most of the time with a little bit of antiquing wax to give it a little bit of age and embellishing farmhouse look. Look how cute this looks. I'm so excited to put this in my china hutch with these cute little eggs there. I think this is so fun. I love it. I would love to know what you think of this one. I absolutely love making fun little things with these trays from Dollar Tree. So I am just taking it and I will list the spray paint that I use down in my description box, but it is a type of like outdoor paint that kind of gives it like a hammered metal look. Look down in my description box and I'll leave you the name and everything of what it is. And if I can find a link on Amazon, I'll leave that as well. But I'm taking these little, uh, paper placemats from Hobby Lobby. Guys, I always find these left over from like the season. I feel like they maybe don't sell as well. People don't know what to do with them or something because I always find them and they're so cute. So I just traced the base of the tray on the, um, my little placemat there and now i'm just kind of pushing it into the edge here to kind of make another i'm making a template is what i'm going to do so i'll use this to cut another one out so i'm just cutting around all of the edge to make sure that it fits in the center of that tray hopefully you can see what i'm doing and it's making sense to you so i'll just kind of put that in it fits great so i'll put it on another one this is my final piece here i will trace this out because that first piece kind of got wrinkled and everything when i was playing around with it and i will just cut this one out and we're just going to adhere this to the tray. Now I'm just using my purple school glue. This is just like a glue stick from Elmer's and I'm just going to put this on the base of the platter here and then use the placemat to stick down on there. I've had a couple of questions asking how well this glue holds up. I have done projects with this that are like two or three years old or more, and I have not had any problem with the paper lifting up. I do recommend using a higher quality. I have used just like the, the Jot or J-O-T brand from Dollar Tree glue, and it has not held up as well on some projects. So I'm just saying like maybe use a higher end of glue stick if you're planning on reselling these or having longevity. I have not had a problem with this purple school glue, which is why I use it nonstop. But I'm just using my brayer here and I'm just going to smooth out any wrinkles or anything and then I am just going to take Mod Podge and first go around the edges of the paper to seal those down and then I will Mod Podge the entire piece of paper. 
The Mod Podge is just going to help seal this and I do end up going around the entire tray with it as well. This is not going to be food safe, so I just wanna point that out. This is just for decorative purposes only. I have a china hutch that I like to put different dishes and things in and this is always cute to have this platter size in there as a background. Now I was using a type of Mod Podge that was called like hard coat or something you can see here. It's just what I happen to have and grab. I probably would just do a normal shiny gloss now next time on it so just fair warning on that but I think it still turned out really cute and it's going to look absolutely darling in my china hutch don't forget that I'm on Instagram also I love to meet new insta friends so I would love for you to come over and say hi check out my page and see all the latest projects that I'm working on I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me You can find these little tags. I feel like pretty much at Christmas time is a guarantee, but you're starting to see them for a lot more. Holidays are different things at Dollar General or Dollar Tree, Walmart, places like that. So this is just one left over from Christmas time. And look, this paper just ended up peeling off there. I didn't have to spray water on it or anything. That was such a fluke that never happens. So I'm just taking it and I'm going to cover it in completely white chalk paint. Again, the colors are completely customizable to what you would like to do for your home. But I just go ahead and cover front and back. And then I use some painter's tape to do a little bit of a ticking stripe on here. So I just do my wide stripe first. And then rather than doing the littler stripes on either side, I decide to do two little ones along the base. When I do my stripes like this, I like to pounce my paint on with a little amount to seal that edge, and then I'll peel the paper off. This helps to kind of seal everything in so you don't have a lot of bleed through. Now I did have a little bit, you can see a little boo-boo on the back there that I needed to, or what, I don't know if it was the back or the front, but I go back in with some chalk paint and cover that right up. So I do sand it down to kind of have it have that little weathered look, and I go around all of the edges as well. That is personal preference, but if you've watched me ever before, you know that I love to distress things. I am very impressed with the rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. You can see how easy this is. You just cut it out, place it on your surface, and then you rub it, and it just transfers from that backing onto your uh, surface there. And then I just cut the word gather out on my cutting machine. That would be completely optional. Again, there's different ways you can do this, either with rub-on transfer words or uh, water slide decal paper. But I'm just using my chip brush here to kind of go over with a little bit of dry brushing for uh, to kind of age it. It has a little bit of white chalk paint left in it. And now I'm just going to make a little string of beads here. And so I'm just doing a couple of sizes here and I'll just kind of alternate every few beads. I'll do a bigger bead and then I will just tie that off on the end. I love using little tags like this for tiered trays and things. And I'm so excited to show you what I have in store for how I'm going to display this one. To make the tassel, I just wrapped some jute twine around a little square piece of wood that I had about 20 times or so till I had the desired thickness. And then I am just tying it off at the top and putting it onto the end of that garland. And that's what the start of my tassel will be. And then I just go tie it off, you know, maybe like a fourth of, it, of the way down to kind of make, I'm not really sure what that top loop of the tassel is called. If anybody knows, please let me know. Um, but I will just tie that off and then I will wrap the twine around it several times to kind of make it have that little look of a tassel, I guess. And I just tie that off and then I will go ahead and it's super fun to kind of cut. It's kind of satisfying feeling when you cut the end of this tassel. You'll stick your scissors through uh, the loops and you'll cut those all there. At least that's how I do it. And then you just kind of put them all straight and then you're just going to cut them all off so they are the same length. I guess you could just cut them straight off to begin with rather than in the middle, but that's how I do it. I think this is the perfect piece for everyday farmhouse decor. I love how this turned out. I think it's absolutely beautiful. For this project, I am using a couple of square dowels that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I'm showing you here. Some of these came from Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, anywhere you can get them. And I will put all of my measurements and what I cut them to down in my description box. Uh, and so just keep that in mind that I will show you there all the different pieces that I had, but I will list them all out for you in the description box so you'll know exactly how to cut them and how many you need to do. Every once in a while, 
as a crafter, you make a project that you absolutely fall in love with and you're like, this is my favorite project ever. This one is right up there with all of my favorites. I love how this turns out. I'm making a cute little bench that I have seen kind of popping up in my Instagram feed that people have used kind of as a different style of riser or tiered tray type thing. And that's what I'm going to create. So I am taking these two pieces here and I am taking these little shorter pieces. It's really hard to kind of understand at this point right now what it what it's looking like or how it's working until I show you and then you'll, you'll go aha so I promise so I just kind of marked about an inch and a half up from the base of those two blocks to glue my little short pieces to right now I'm making like the support for the chair so you'll be able to tell in just a moment and then on the other end I'm just gluing those right up against the end so just take note of how I'm doing this. It's kind of hard to explain where you'll see exactly what I mean here. So this is where once these have dried a little bit with my wood glue, you can kind of see here when I put them there, it's starting to kind of look like the sides of a chair or a bench. Does that, hopefully that makes sense to you. And then I'm just going to glue these onto both sides. So it's going to look maybe like the number six or something like that here. <laughs> That's the best way that I can kind of explain it there or a B or something like that. And I just kind of use my clamps and until it gets kind of a good hold there. And then I'm just gluing that other piece together. Um, and then here they kind of stand up. So hopefully you can see now and you go, oh, okay, I totally get it because this is where we are here. So this is really, um, I'm doing that little support beam between the two sides of our bench. This is what is going to hold them together besides the slats that will sit as the backrest and the seat rest on there. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing that into the center. This is very farmhouse. It doesn't have to be super exact. So don't worry. You can kind of, if I, if you look at my height, I did this 12 inches high. And if you're like, I don't want it that tall, you don't have to do it that tall. And these are just paint sticks the five gallon paint sticks from Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever you get your paint sticks and I tape them all together to cut them and you can just cut them with a miter box saw that you have like a hand saw you can have like the I use my uh, power miter saw that I have and I'm cutting those down I cut those down to 11 inches again I will have all of my measurements listed down in the description box in case you want to recreate this but I don't use any nails or anything I just use hot glue and wood glue and hot glue just kind of gives it that short-term hold and that wood glue uh, dries for that long-term hold and guys this is so sturdy like it really is and you can see that I left just a little bit of space between the slats on the backrest and the seat rest there and then I am just taking some antiquing wax and I am going over this now at first I started doing this with a baby wipe but after I had turned my camera off because you didn't want to see like 20 minutes of me staining this I do end up getting a brush and I I will brush it all on and then wipe it off with the baby wipe since there's so much surface area to cover and in between the little slats and everything that's what ended up working best for me and you can stain this in whatever color you wanted to i just used the antiquing wax from waverly to brighten it up a bit, I just dry brush a little bit. And by little, I mean just the littlest amount of white chalk paint all over it just to brighten it up. I just think that when you go along the edges and everything, it kind of gives a little bit of definition to it. And I personally really like the way that looks. So completely optional to what you like. And I just go around all of the edges here. Hopefully you can see by the pieces here that there's not a lot of base pieces from start to finish. This took me less than 40 minutes and that's with staining and everything and doing my wood cuts and everything. It was a very quick project. I love how it turns out and I am so excited in the final reveal to show you how I styled it. I just, I love this. I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching the projects today. I hope that you feel inspired and that you have some great ideas to do some everyday farmhouse decor for your home. What do you guys think of these? I am just in love with this little bench here. I'm going to have so much fun styling this, just kind of like a different take on a tiered tray or a riser. I think for different holidays, little banners to make to put along the little back there. I don't know. I just so many ideas are reeling in my head that I'm so excited. I just absolutely love it. 
it. If you're looking for some more farmhouse ideas, which I know you are, remember to click that link down in my description box for Mary Beth. She has some beautiful projects to show you and I know you're going to love them. And go ahead and tell her hi from Emily from Farm Charm Chic while you're there. Uh, let her know that I sent you over there. She is so fantastic. You guys are going to love her and she really needs your support guys. So go ahead and subscribe to her while you're there and watch her beautiful DIYs. As always, I would like to remind you to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much guys. I will see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.